been busy prepping the parts for my print and see. There's a lot of parts to building a CNC machine that I didn't even realize until I started. I finally got the steel out of my bathroom and cut it down at the baker space to the size listed in the metric size calculator on the 3 Design website. The link is in the description. I used the cold cut saw at the maker space to roughly cut the lengths of the steel to size, leaving about 5 millimeters extra so I could machine the rest. With the Bridgeport mill, I was able to machine the X and Y rollers to their respective dimensions. The rollers are the parts that hold on to the ball screw nut and linear bearing. They are square within a tenth of a millimeter or about three thousandths of an inch. Next, I clamped the long tube securely in the vise as flat as I could and machined off the edge about one millimeter at a time until I got it to the correct length using a metric tape measure. One of the suggestions from the Print and See Discord community and Wiki is to use the Cisco power supply. These are fairly cheap on eBay and provide 1300 watts of 42 volt DC for more stepper motor torque and speed, as well as 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts. I ordered the plug and pins from Mauser so I didn't have to modify it internally. Shout out to Chris Riley of Chris's Basement for sending me this Dell Optiplex 780. It's more than enough to run Linux NC and has a parallel port in case I need extra I.O. I ran the Linux CNC jitter test to make sure the system could handle the specific timings required to send stepper pulses to the drivers, which could limit the feed rate and cause step losses. I got a Mesa 7i96, so jitter isn't as important since it handles the stepper pulses and inputs without the parallel port. I plan on wiring the stepper drives and steppers to the Mesa card once I get some proper wire. Linux CNC has a PNC config wizard to create parameters such as assigning inputs and steps per millimeter calibrations. Since I'm building this in my room, I needed a solid workbench to build the print and see on. I found this 2x4 basics leg kit on Amazon which allows you to screw 2x4s into plastic legs and place plywood top and shelves. It was very easy to assemble by myself and I think it will be perfect once I have a little bit of extra reinforcement. I plan on building the full enclosure, but wood is very expensive right now, so I'll wait until everything is assembled. Thanks to Tom at Electric Coat in Dallas for powder coating my steel with a beautiful alloy silver. It saved me a lot of time with prep and paint, and it's very durable. This is a mock-up of how all the two pieces will be arranged in the assembly. I haven't gotten a lower Z-axis aluminum angle or Z-axis plates yet, but I met a local print and see builder that could help me out. I found large furniture sliders that will help me out moving the workbench in and out on carpet since the work CNC workbench will be 700 pounds when finished. There is a Python script for the print and see Fusion 360 file that generates the STL files for the 3D printed assembly tools and parts needed for the build. They fit tightly and allow you to get accurate tapped holes. I ordered a transfer punch set, a center hole punch, a tap magic and a set of metric drills and taps for the process. I probably won't record all of it as it might be boring. Let me know if you want to see it in the comments below. Finally, I will be putting sound deadening tiles behind the workbench as part of my plan to keep the print and see as quiet as possible. I wanted to address the concerns about building this in my apartment bedroom. Currently I can't afford to rent or buy a house. Um, but this is the most convenient option. My concerns are really noise, chips, um, dust, power, availability, and fire hazards. Uh, the enclosure should eliminate most of the noise below like 80 decimals um, and prevent chips from going everywhere. Um, my shared wall with my neighbor behind me, um, most of the time this apartment complex is very quiet. So I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue if I run it at reasonable hours. And I'm also going to talk to my neighbor about any noise issues. Uh, power, I plan on running a well-rated extension cord from another circuit. And uh, I could also use 240 volts from my dryer or my oven. Um, they sell four-prong extension cords. They're kind of expensive, but that would be the better option. Um, I will also be very diligent about operating this machine like any other machine 
I'll have a fire fire uh, extinguisher and fire uh, suppression system. If anything goes wrong, I'll have an emergency stop system, and I'll be able to, you know, control any electrical issues uh, immediately. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, if I get any complaints about running the machine, I I have looked at uh, rental studios that are available at downtown Dallas. Um, that might be an option, um, but for now, I think I think I, this can be a pretty controllable uh, sized machine um, for an apartment. Um, apparently, I'm the first one to probably do it, so it's uh, kind of a learning experience. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about. Uh, what I'm doing, and uh, I'll try to address those concerns. Thank you.